and you know I could not afford to be here without stopping by the Sigma booth. As many of you know, I own and use many of Sigma lenses. I own about six of them myself, and all of my short films, I've been using Sigma Art Prime lenses. So with that said, I want to talk about something near and dear to me, that is cinema lenses. So we're here at Sigma's booth, and and we're gonna learn a little something about that today. So thank you, Aaron. Of course, yeah, thanks, Aaron. And uh, what is the difference between still lenses and cinema lenses? It's a great question, one that we get quite a bit in this market especially. Uh, so in our lineup, the optical formulas or the arrangement of the glass inside mm. is actually identical between our cine lenses and our art series primes. So the quality. Exactly, the optical quality, okay. the, the performance, the characteristics, they're gonna be the same. Oh. Uh, the big difference is really the housings. Okay. With the stills lenses, the art series lenses, those are designed for individual operators, you know, running and gunning on their own, primarily using autofocus in photography. Okay. Um, and so there are some different considerations for that market. Those lenses we want to try to make smaller, lighter weight, easier for one person to, to run around and use. Oh. Um, and for the primes, uh, the autofocus, the, the shorter we make that run, the faster those autofocus transitions and acquisitions are going to be. Okay. Uh, when you get into the video, world where autofocus is still, it's becoming more reliable, but for a very long time it's been kind of unusable for video. Mm. Uh, so people will often, as you start to get more and more involved in it, will pull focus manually when they're recording video so that they can get smoother transitions and better accuracy without the, the jumping around that can be really visually distracting yeah. during video recording. I've noticed that myself. Like yeah. The control, shooting manual, far superior when filmmaking mm. versus a wedding. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, so we have a few cinema lenses that look absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So what do we have here? What do we have? Uh, for some of the primes, we have okay. the 24 T15, the 65 T15, and the 135 T2. Mm. Those are all full frame coverage. And then on our FP setup here, we have the 18 to 35 T2. That is a Super 35 or APS-C coverage lens. Beautiful. And now I noticed these these little uh, these gears here. What, what, What's that about? Why don't I see that on the still photo lenses? So with the stills lenses, uh, the idea is that we have one person with the cam you know, the camera operator is running around on their own using autofocus. Okay. Uh, so with those lenses, the, the shorter the focus or the faster your autofocus is going to be. When we start manually focusing, however, those short throws on a still lens that's usually going to be 30 to 35 degrees of rotation. Uh, while it's great for fast autofocus, it makes it really difficult to have precise, mm. controlled movements when you're manually focusing. Because a small adjustment on that focus ring can make a big difference in where focus is landing in your scene. Gotcha. On the cine lenses, we extrapolate that out now to 180 degrees of rotation. So it would be, if, if these lenses had autofocus, it would be much slower because it has much further range that it has to move through. But when we're manually focusing, that gives you a much finer degree of control and accuracy. From the nose to the eye. Exactly. It gives you a lot more control over where exactly your focus is falling in your scene. Now the gearing here helps uh, when we're attaching accessories to control those remotely. Because often by the time the, the difference in handling characteristics makes sense for a cine lens to be used over a stills lens, it's not going to be just one person running around with the camera yes. acting as the camera operator, the <laughs> lens puller, the uh, focus puller. Sound mixer the and everything else. There we go. It's the name of the game. Yeah. Welcome to trade show life. Right, for real. <laughs> so typically, uh, where these lenses are going to be implemented, we're working in a, a production environment where we have multiple people on set. One person is going to be operating the camera. You'll have another person pulling focus, another person potentially controlling the iris from a remote monitor. So there are accessories that allow um, remote control of those functions. Mm. And this is an industry standard pitch. So those accessories will mount directly up to these rings. Oh, there's a standard for that. Yes. Oh, okay. Well. Yes. And so when... When we get to this level of production involvement and we're using a stills lens, typically because they don't have these gearings built in, you'll have an accessory that allows you that same control. But it would be essentially a band with oh, that, that pitch, exactly, it. that would go around either the focus ring or the zoom ring, depending on what lens you're using, to allow uh, that stills lens to meet up with those video world accessories. Gotcha. These are built in so that you don't have to do that. I and I, single, and I noticed that they're all kind of the same distance and exactly. from each other and everything. Yeah, 
So, so I'm guessing that allows you to just set it and forget it in a sense. Precisely. And that's one of the big differences when, when we get into conversations about do I need to shoot this with a cine lens or is the art series lens that I'm using going to give me the results that I need? The look is going to be the same, but this mm. is one of the key areas where the difference in the, the interface, the user control, can really make a difference on set. For smaller productions, one person or maybe a two or three Doc person team. thing, you can totally pull it off with the still lenses. Exactly. Okay. But because the gearing and the positions, the diameter of those setups, it's going to be different from lens to lens because mm. on a stills lens, there's no consideration on the design or manufacturing side of making that consistent throughout. They, they right. don't need to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, what that means is if you are swapping lenses, you have to reset your gearing for the specifics of the lens that's coming Spend on. Spend another few minutes on that. Exactly. Which doesn't seem like a big thing. And yeah. for, you know, small production crews or someone running and gunning on their own, it's not. You can make time to accommodate that, but okay. it does add time to your production. Yeah. So when you have people on set waiting for the next shot, that becomes a much bigger issue. Totally. And especially when budget's on a line. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, so now, these are standardized so that when you swap those lenses out, okay. your focus control and your iris control are going to be in the exact same positions. So you don't have to reset your rigging. It'll just drop in. It makes those transitions much faster. It's much more efficient in larger production environments. Let me ask this, because I'm sure some people may be asking, because I already thought about it, why is Sigma in cine lenses? Sure. Well, it's actually kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the art series lenses is where we kind of started. Um, those lenses were performing so well. They have such good imaging characteristics that we were seeing the marketplace was adapting those still lenses into video production. And video has like been a growing, growing market for the photo world. There's been a lot of transition over the last few years of people getting more involved into video that were traditionally photographers or still-based content mm. creators. Mm. Uh, and we were seeing a lot of our customers were taking pretty ex some extreme measures to make our art series lenses, still lenses, world. exactly, be more well-suited uh. to a production environment. And from a manufacturing standpoint, especially for the way that we produce lenses, we have a, a very high threshold, a very high level of pride and the equipment that we produce and we want to make we sure thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure that our customers can rely on our products to perform and the adaptations that are required are that we were seeing happening in the marketplace for those art series still lenses to have this kind of control and um, streamlined uh, user experience interface um, so you want to make sure that it performs and gives us the performance as well as results as what everyone expects from the art but in a cinematic usage well, package if you will like you know with the gears and everything some of the adaptations they they were very dependent on who was doing them so mm. the art series lenses that are, were being rehoused or adapted for cine use some were better than others uh, um, and so we we want to have a more consistent um, presence in that marketplace and so we thought what if we just did that ourselves if there's a market if there's enough people looking for this equipment in that arena totally why don't we just produce it there so that it's to our level of expectation and quality that's right so you don't have any questions about how accurate that focus scale yeah. is they or, already know from from what they've experienced in the still world what to expect here in the cinema world right and you get the same consistency so we're kind of unique in both sides of the world uh, in the cine world, this is more common. In the photo world, it's very uncommon. That we individually inspect every single lens before it ever leaves our factory. And that is a huge point of how we want to make sure by the time it gets in the hands of the, the content creator, the user, that it is as close to perfect as we can get it. And this, um, this allowed us to make that same level of consistency and quality control available for the video market that we've been providing to the photo market. Now you're providing them. Now, okay, so you have four of them out here. Mm -hmm. Which one is your favorite? Uh, I tend to shoot a little bit more on the I'm wide side, especially for the cine lenses. My favorites are going to be the, the 28, the 40, and the 65. Okay. Well, I'm not going to lie. The, this one, the 18 to 35, mm -hmm. has been staring at me. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been giving it googly eyes, okay? Just because of the range. Yeah, it's it a very popular really lens for that. Yeah. It, oh, is it's it? It's a very useful range. It's mm -hmm. a fast uh, T-stop. It's T2. T2. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in low light situations or okay. depth of field control. Um, this also pairs really well. We have a, a 50 to 100. That's also a T2. Mm. Those two lenses. Oh, that's a T2 too. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. They give you a lot of range and a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of either shooting in low light situations or being able to have a lot of control over what's in and out of focus in your shot. Last question. 
So can you tell us real quick, what is the biggest difference between T-stops and F-stops? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so they're referencing the same thing. We're talking about light transmission through the optical assembly, through the lens itself. Uh, so in the photo world, we use f-stops. An f-stop is a theoretical value based off of the optical formula. How much light should move through that optical assembly. Oh. They're not necessarily verified. So often in the photo world, you'll find uh, light transmission, especially as you're near your maximum aperture, where you'll have more fall off on the outside of that image circle. Okay. Uh, the theoretical value and the actual value, sometimes there's a little bit of variance there. In the cine world, they're a lot more concerned about the actual light transmission values. Uh, and again, it's, it's part of when you're working on a set that's fully illuminated, it's really important to know exactly how much light is getting back to your cameras. So, so T are, is way more accurate. Exactly. T is a measured value. A T-stop is an actual measured value of how much light is making through that assembly. And that's why, even though these are the same optical formulas, there's a little bit of variance between the Art Series still lens mm. and the Cine um, in terms of light transmission. So in the, the photo lineup, the 24, for example, that's an f1.4. So theoretically, that's how much light should be making it through that assembly. Now, when we actually measure that value, it's a little bit lower because some light does get lost, lost. in that translation. Gotcha. So it's a t1.5. Okay. That's still, it's a pretty decent value. It's not a lot of fall off there, but that's something you might see also in other I've never, I've never seen a huge, I've never seen it to make a difference. Yeah. But I'm sure if I got nerdy with a meter. Exactly, yeah. It's where, where you have a lot of control over. People are setting the light in that entire scene. It's not, it's especially, it's more like production environments where we're not working with available natural light, but okay. it's a very controlled setup. They're trying to get a specific look and they need to know how much of the light in the scene is getting into the camera. Into the, actually hitting that sexy. Yeah. So, with all that said, I know today that we concentrated mainly on cinema lenses. Don't worry. We've all been noticing that they've been expanding into the Nikon mount, right? The Z mount. That's right, yes. Uh, RF? Not quite yet. We are but, hopeful that it'll be on the horizon. But. And they do plenty of email, so yes. don't worry about that, uh, you Sony fanboys and gals. Um, with that said, where can we find more updates about Sigma? Well, the easiest way, um, if you go to our site, sigmaphoto.com, you can get on our mailing list. Anytime we have a new product announcement okay. or significant you know, firmware updates, things like that, uh, those are usually maybe once a month. Uh, All right. So they're not getting get the uh, newsletter. You won't exactly. be killing us with it, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, with all that said, that is it here doing this awesome touch tour with the cinema lenses offered by Sigma. I for sure will hope and pray my pockets are good enough to buy this one right here, the 18 to 35 T2.0. With all that said, this touch tour has just begun. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, and all that good stuff, and press the bell notification to get updates for my upcoming content. And as you know, until next time, keep shooting, stay creative.